But here's the, here's here's what sticks with me, right? So you've got uh, Jonas Vingegaard, who's 50 seconds down through, really, the two stages that they were most worried. I, I think it's safe to say stage one and stage four were the two that they were the most scared about this entire tour. If you would have told him when he's leaving the hospital, whatever, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, okay, we'll make you a deal right now. Uh, you'll get out of here. You'll start training. And you're only going to be 50 seconds down after those two days you're scared about. He takes that deal every time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He takes that deal. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every day this summer by Ketone IQ. We're talking about stage four. Mon ami Alain. Stage four from Pinerolo to Valoir. Oh. From Pinerolo to Valois. Now we're, we're back in France. Uh, Alain, Alain back in is France. back home. He's back home. I think we're gonna, he's going to get it right from here on out. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, well look, what is, what is, I, I think just high level. I mean, nobody's surprised by what Taddy Pogachar did. How good was his team, though? That's Remember, there was, it was not that many years ago where people questioned whether or not he had a team to support him. Mm-hmm. And, now, and then they made some moves that first off season, and then they made more moves. I, I, I mean, th- what I mean as it sits today, three riders in the top eight on GC. What a dominant performance for for quite a while. It looked like a team time trial. Yeah. Um, for that, basically the whole way up that last climb. Uh, we'll get into all the action before we do today's show. Brought to you by Zwift. The Zwift Ride Smart Bike just dropped, and it's all about bringing the most realistic ride experience to your home. The tour passed the, uh, the Col de Galibier today, but you don't need to travel to France and experience riding your bike up a mountain pass, not to mention going down it, which, of course, we'll talk about later. Now that Zwift brings the mountains straight to your home. As the official software training partner of the Tour de France, Zwift are able to bring you one-to-one replicas of some of the most iconic Tour de France climbs, like the Galibier, Isola 2000, and the Col de Ez. That's pretty cool. We'll see that towards uh, the end of this tour uh, we have uh, the uh, the bike right here, uh, just off um, off camera here in the studio, and I, it's amazing. Uh, the, I know there's been a lot of talk about the Swift bike. I know there's there's been some starts and stops. Well, when they finally got it right, they nailed it. This bike is unbelievable. Uh, all for twelve ninety nine and ninety nine, aka one penny shy of thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, so it's priced. Perfectly. You can, and again, you can replicate all of these climbs. Head on over to Zwift.com to grab yours. That's Zwift.com. Also today brought to you by Wahoo. Wahoo. Wahoo bike computers are proven in the Peloton. Used by eight world tour teams. More features than ever, including Wahoo's Summit feature, providing you with color gradients, detailed climb data, and even helps you detect climbs nearby when you're not using a route. And I might add, as we were watching today, we saw this dangerous descent down the Glibier. George, yes, <clears throat> they were on the mapping feature. They are. They have. They know the descent. They were watching the descent. That this is how they're doing it. You caught. I think. Who'd you call? You caught somebody looking at it. R- Remco. Remco. Yeah. Remco had it up. Uh, new he feature. Got, he got dropped though at the top right on the <laughs> descent. Uh, new feature that we love, and I, I, it's shocking that it took uh, anybody. Uh, this long to do it, but they nailed it, right? You can control your music. You can control your GoPro right there on your head unit. Make every ride more engaging by controlling the music directly right there. Capture epic video footage, a.k.a. Lance dropping George. Also, uh, as part of the Wahoo family, we have Speedplay. I've been riding Speedplay pedals for, gosh, 12 or 13 years now. Absolutely love them. Uh I switched over in, in my uh, triathlon days, and I thought I, th- I thought that would be the best move for me. Um, generate a ton of power, very aero, easy in and out, um, and you know, then they just look also super super light. I think is a key thing. If you think about the aero factor over the course of an entire ride, you're just banking watts that you can use later in the ride. Uh, Wahoo cycling products are trusted by the Pro Peloton. As I mentioned, there are eight World Tour teams using the products. Now you can save 20% off on select full price products by using the free coupon code the move 2024 at checkout. During the tour, go to wahoofitness.com slash the move. Use the code the move 
2024 to save 20 percent i don't know why i'm out of breath <laughs> also today brought to you by athletic greens this is this has just become g is over there sipping on his athletic greens as it's just a, it's a staple of ours this is uh as i like to say uh, and i mean it and, and i think it stands true just take control of your health whether it's the habits that you uh, that you start your day with or that you control throughout the day, uh, Athletic Greens is research-backed uh, and clinically proven to make a difference. Uh, they have Over the 14 years, they've totally focused on innovation. I think they've had like 75 different changes uh, in the formulation to totally optimize this product. If there's one product that I trust to support my whole body health, it is AG1. That's why I've partnered with them for so long. It's easy and satisfying to start your journey with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Head on over to drinkag1.com slash TDF. That's drinkag1.com slash TDF. Take control of your health. Um, the other big headline, which I, I frankly, I'm, I'm, and I was, I was on this yesterday, uh, Care Pass. I mean, I don't. I, I, I thought for sure he'd make it. In in the. I mean, look. It's funny. The yellow jersey is a funny thing, right? They they talk about that. You you have sort of two schools, right? There, and I remember growing up as as a kid, and and the, sort of the adage was that the yellow jersey gives you wings. Right, so you put this jersey on, you're in. It's you can dig one, a little deeper. It's the it's the one jersey in the race that everybody notices, whether you're on t watching on TV or you're standing on the side of the road. It's that special, and it is powerful. So there's there's this one school can or this school thought that says it gives you wings. You know, there's another one that says, hey, there's a lot of pressure with it. There's a lot of commitment after the race, after the stages. Um, you know, you might be nervous, may not sleep as well. I just would have thought he'd have had a better day. Not only did he just not have a great day, a terrible day. Losing. Well, and let's five, not forget. He's down about five minutes. Yeah, let's not forget. Incredible first three stages for um, Carapaz, but he had a very, very tough crash in Tour of Switzerland. Very serious crash. He did not ride more than three hours between Tour of Switzerland and Tour de France. Mm. So the fact that he actually got it, the yellow it, jersey. It's a big deal. The longest ride he did was three hours. I mean, the long, yeah, the long, sorry, the okay. longest ride he's done before yeah. since the Tour of Switzerland was three hours. Shows up to the Tour de France, makes the first uh, the first group on the first day, gets the yellow jersey on day three or whatever it was. Pretty incredible. Let's not forget about his crash. Look, uh, you you can't. That's all true, and and that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, it's also unfortunate that for a team uh, like Education First, this was a this was a golden opportunity, right? This might. You get through today, you could theoretically have this jersey for a week. Yeah. Well, you got the time trial coming up, but um, it, it, it was a great opportunity and one that's now gone. Um, but look, uh, yes, uh, way to rally back. Uh, it's it's hard to prepare for the Tour de France when your longest ride is three hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you saw, I mean, like I mentioned, it was like a team time trial. These guys were going in the big chain ring at the bottom of the Glibier. One by one, it was lined out. It was more of like a just a full-on power climb. And then they hit the steeper slopes at the top of the Glibier. Uh, got, you saw guys like Bernal, I mean, um, Simon Yates. Some of the best climbers in the world just couldn't keep up with that high-speed climbing pace. And I think it truly affected a guy like Carapaz today. One of the few times I've seen, we, we, we talked about this yesterday, uh, and, and talked about how we're not a fan of downhill finishes. Uh, we can get into that later because there has been some debate uh, amongst the riders uh, about their their uh, reluctance to, to to finish downhill. But I got to say, this is one of the few times that they actually raced the climb as if it was an uphill finish. I, I, that didn't feel like, and then the downhill was exciting as a spectator. Yeah. Uh, as we've said, a lot of times that neutralizes the climb. I didn't see, they raced it like the finish was at the top. Yeah, well, because of the time bonus. I mean, yep. they, they wanted that, that eight seconds was a big deal at the time. Um, we didn't know that Pogacar was going to ride away from everybody. I don't love it. I think it's a, these guys risk, essentially risk their lives going down that mountain today. And I think that's just, you know, not a necessary added risk that they should be throwing into the, uh, these riders' lives right now. It just, it's, it's for me, it's as a former professional cyclist watching that, knowing what they're putting on the line and watching a guy like Vindigo after what he just has overcome in the last few months 
And I know you got to think in the back of his mind, he's going, I do not want to end up in the hospital <laughs> no. again. And it was very, and for me, it was Roglic actually, was probably thinking that too. Remco was probably all of them. thinking that. I mean, it's just like, come on, that's just, and we've both done that descent many times. Yep. It's, it's sketchy. It was wet at the top. Not only was it wet, but it's, it's different if it's wet the whole time. There was just wet sections of it. Right. So you don't really know when the wet corners are coming. It's, I mean, I was trembling watching these guys go down the mountain. If you watched it on TV, which the, I'm sure the feed is global, you're seeing the speeds. I mean, they're going 55 miles an hour downhill. Uh, there are no guard. The thing that always amazes me, and this has always been the case uh, on either side of the Glibier, is there are no guardrails. If you go off, the only thing, your only hope you have is a parachute. I mean, you are going. Take it from me. You, are, you will be airborne. It's, 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 it's fun to sit, not fun, but we, we watched the race this morning with my good friend Clint. And to have a person who's never seen these type of downhills, mm -hmm. watch these guys that are 130 pounds go downhill at 55 yeah. miles an hour, just to see their reaction like, oh my God. 2008, I crashed going down the Glibier, 45 miles an hour. Still knock on wood. I was able to get up, had no skin on the right side of my body, but my bike mm -hmm. was snapped in half. I mean, it's, I was super lucky. So mm -hmm. watching this descent today, I was still feeling uh, the effects of that crash and was very scared for the riders. Yeah. <clears throat> today was also a test for Roglic, which you had your eye on yeah. that. And he managed some, but it's, it's going to add up. The end results, uh, are, uh, the end result uh, can be a little confusing. I think you really have to look at, how he looked on the final climb. He looked to start, he looked fine. He was there, he was third or fourth wheel. And, I did notice and, he was out of the saddle a lot more than I'm used to seeing him. He was moving around, yep. not, not a good sign uh, for him. And then he just started drifting back. And I, I mean, I, there was this collective, oh no, in, in, in our room as we were watching. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and even if you can claw your way back, get back on the downhill, he, it, tonight he is not thinking that he didn't lose time to Vingegaard, for example, he is thinking about not being able to hold the wheel on the climb. That's that's all he's thinking about. Yeah. Again, stage four, first mountain day. They got a few days off before the next, well, several days off before the next hard mountain days. Not a total disaster, but not what we wanted to see in Roglic today. In mm -hmm. fact, midway up that climb, I thought Roglic might win the stage. But you, as you, you saw, were him, hyping on yeah, that. I was, you I was were. hyping on him. And I wanted to see it as I'm a huge fan of his. And I think it would have added to the excitement of the race. But he's not out. I mean, he's definitely still in it for his chance at the podium and still going to keep fighting to the end of the race. So if you remember pre-show, everyone was talking about uh, Pogacar is probably going to have 10 minutes after the first week, right? <laughs> so this this looks very promising for uh, for Roglic, for Evan Poole, for Jonas Vingago. It's And we've all said Vingago could get stronger as the tour progresses. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I don't think there's any doubt. Look, I mean, if... Um, obviously Pogachar in the yellow jersey. Ben Rimko. I, I know. I, I know. I said what I said early on. That this. That by the way, this is a beast of a tour. I, I caught myself this morning, uh, just going uh, fast forwarding to the end and looking at the last three, four, five days. The we can we can talk about all this stuff and what happens in the day right now. The, this thing at the end. First of all, we, we all know how tough the start was. That that doesn't just that's not one and done and it's behind you. It's a cumulative. The last week of this tour is so hard. So uh, anything goes. Uh, Remco's hanging in there. I was surprised he got dropped on the downhill. But here's, the, here's, here's what sticks with me, right? So you've got uh, Jonas Vingegaard, who's 50 seconds down through, really, the two stages that they were most worried. I, I think it's safe to say stage one and stage four were the two that they were the most scared about this entire tour. If you would have told him when he's leaving the hospital, whatever, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, okay, we'll make you a deal right now. Uh, you'll get out of here. You'll start training. And you're only going to be 50 seconds down after those two days you're scared about. He takes that deal every time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He takes that deal. Yeah. So if you're him and them, you're like, eh, not ideal, but... We'd have taken that deal. He yeah, could be five minutes down. 50 seconds down, but only five seconds down after the hardcore attack sprint to the top of the mountain. Sure, he, lo he lost another 25, 30 seconds on the downhill, but I think that's actually pretty understandable given his circumstances, given what he just overcame. Um, probably a bit of fear going on there, but 
straight up power on the climb. He was only five seconds behind Pogachar, mm -hmm. and we most likely um, he's just going to get better and better. And perhaps Pogachar is at his best and can probably hold on to his best level throughout the tour because he's done it before. But Vindigo is just going to keep getting stronger and stronger, in my opinion. Mind you, there was that was uh, Pogachar did not go until a kilometer from the top when it it did get steep again, approaching ten percent. Uh, Venga. Lingagard stayed with him. So he lost about five seconds and about 500 meters. Um, he tried to stay, couldn't hold, couldn't, uh, couldn't hold the wheel. So you could multiply that a little bit if, if it was a long, steep climb. But nonetheless, I'll repeat, he's taken the deal, right? Yeah. 50 seconds after those two days, he's got a little time. Now his next checkpoint, his next uh, appointment uh, is the time trial. So, and as, as he's proven... The kid's a freak. I, uh, I don't know who's going to show up in the time trial. Yeah, the time trial is going to be really interesting to see what happens there. With even, I mean, throw Evan Poole in there, who on paper yep. is perhaps stronger than both of those guys in the time trial. So I think it's just, this race is uh, not disappointing so far. How, how about Sudal Quickstep? Here's a team that, that we've spent the entire spring talking about, uh, just uh, how, how they didn't show up at the races that are truly in their DNA. Two guys in the top seven. You got Landa hanging around. When's the last time we talked about Mikael Landa on this show? Yeah, right? he's, he's there. A, he's a minute 32 down. But he's yeah, right there. I mean, I mean, two in the top seven, UAE, three in the top eight. I mean, the fact that Evan Poole is still second and he's admittedly made some mistakes. As a GC rider, you can't make these mistakes. On the day to, to Italy where he said he was in the second group, had to bridge up to the first group, bridged up. Pogachar attacked, so his legs weren't quite there. Today, got dropped a bit on the descent, had to bridge back up. You cannot make those mistakes as a GC rider. And I think he's starting to realize that, hey, I got a real shot here to be podium or even more. Uh, and I know his team's going to be on him, like, constantly from here from here on out going, pay attention. You cannot, you know, give those little, make those little mistakes that you've made in the first couple of days. He's in an ideal position right now. Mm -hmm. Are we even going to see anyone attack Pogachar, or is it going to be just watch him and then he goes and whoever can go with him tries? I mean, it's going to be that's absolutely. the recipe for We're going to see it. We're going to see you, it because you, we're seeing you're absolutely going to see it. I, Vindigo is just getting better and better. Um, today, the team on the team front, UAE crushed everybody. They're they're leading the team. They're, they they were a dominant display today, of course. Um, Visma didn't have as many guys up there or any for that matter. They only had Vindigo and Mateo there at, or towards the end. So they need some improvement on the team front. And I think in, in terms of uh, where they're at right now, they're in a perfect position because they don't want to be leading right now because they probably don't want to hammer their guys in the first 10 days. I like the position they're in for sure. Hmm. Again, the time trial. We, we, Pogi, you know, between those three, those are three big question marks, right? Pogachar, Vingegaard, and, and Rimko. How that... Yeah, they, I think that dictates just what kind of attacks we'll see when this race gets super spicy at the end, which is, again, caught myself looking ahead. Shouldn't do that, but I know. And for him, and, so these, and just to, just to <clears throat> just to tell you, I mean, if you go look at the last couple of days, we have a couple of fifteen thousand foot days back to back. Yeah, and then you have a final time trial up the cold. I mean, ugh. this race is the Rude. gift that's going to keep it, giving. It, it, and Pagacar is not going to want it to come down to the time trial. No way. Uh, I, I think he likes it. Scenarios like that. I think he mm. likes to race. But uh, I mean, kudos to ASO. This has been. I mean, we're four days into this. We are. Imagine what happens when we're fourteen days into this. This is this is this is a hell of a start. I didn't see this coming. I didn't. Yeah. Do a little bit of business. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Can I, before we do, let me just say one thing. All right. I was thinking about this, right? So George made a main reference uh, when we started the tour about how uh, he he had been experiencing a new Lance. Right? I, I picked him up at the airport, or checked in on him. What time are you landing? I'll be there. I said, no, you don't have to stay. You know, stay in town. Stay. You can stay with us. Mm. It's very. He felt special. Uh, yeah, yeah he, he even he even acknowledged that right mm -hmm. well the, and it was his birthday and yeah. the birthday i went to his birthday saying happy birthday so the, but i just want to uh, i didn't hear you sing but okay i mean you were right next to me i think i would heard you a lot, we were cash a lot of people looking at me <laughs> so i don't i'd be a little careful um but uh life with george is not what i expected oh boy um you know i do all this i never uh, bottom line i never see the guy mm -hmm. 
he's uh, uh, he's just not there. He's out with all these other swanky friends in Aspen. Legit. <laughs> I, we I, had a nice I, dinner last hold night. Hold on. I came home yesterday. I, he's gone. Just <laughs> I said I said to Anna, where did where did where's George? And she says, oh, he he got on an e bike and said he was going to have a salad and chill. <laughs> <laughs> in town with all these other fancy people no actually, all right was, and then and then i had uh, i uh, teased this i alluded to this I, I had a little knee injury went and got an mri came home george ain't there i mean no standing at the door like dude how'd the mri go uh nothing i did text you and say how was the knee <clears throat> and he, he he is just not and then even when he is there it is like a constant stream of walking around him and picking shit. Up. Oh, God. <laughs> there's half drank Waterloo true. waters. Not true. There's 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 uh, uh, napkins laid around. There's cookie crumbs. <laughs> there's all this stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. That's that's life. I've with George. I've witnessed that. There's a whole. Is there a whole section of your kitchen counter that's just covered in like kid food? <laughs> when George is in the house, yeah. or, yeah, yeah. or at that's least I mean. allegedly staying in the house, yes. Yeah. It's like snacks, kid snacks and yeah. cookies. And we got what are those little those drinks that used to come in the silver? The uh, those things go in your kid. You put the straw in the oh, the juice, the, the little the the ju Capri Suns. Box? Yeah, yeah Capri Suns. a lot of Capri Suns in the fridge <laughs> for George. You use. Oh my goodness! Uh, today's show brought to you by Ketone IQ. Also, by the way, they are our presenting sponsor this entire summer. Uh, we often hear that fasting and exercise are good for the brain. HVMN launched the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Ketone IQ also has a partnership with Visma Lisa Bike. Uh, as, as, and I've also heard, which I believe, that 9 out of 10 teams uh, in this tour are using Ketone IQ exclusively. 30% off your first subscription order plus a free six-pack when you use the link ketone.com slash the move. I get a lot of questions about ketones. We talk about it a lot on all our shows, pretty much. And people, is that, or does that really work? I'm just, I, 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 yeah, every day. It works for me every day. Agreed. I just hit, I just, I just <laughs> took a shot before one. the show. Yeah, you just hammered one. Uh, also today brought to you by Ecoy. Ecoy is a leading brand in Europe specializing in cycling equipment from head to toe. If you saw stage, what's the stage? Uh, I think it was uh, one or two. Uh, that's two. Okay. that shows two. you how much action's been so far. Just two, yeah, okay, two. right? So, uh, uh, you saw the, you saw the Ecoy helmet coming. That's the same helmet I have. The the Gar. I love this helmet. Super comfortable, super lightweight. I think it looks totally dope. Uh, it's one of the few brands that truly develops its products in close collaboration with professional athletes across all the dip disciplines. Ecoy is the most represented brand in this year's Tour de France with four teams. Little known fact. Their products are, are available exclusively online at Ecoy. Let me spell this for you. I know. It's a, 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 all right, pop quiz. How do you spell Ecoy? It's E-K-O-I, e Ecoy.com. Ecoy slogan is innovation, design, and performance, which aptly characterizes the brand as the products are not only technical, but also stylish and comfortable. The entire Ecoy website is currently on sale until the end of July with discounts of up to 60%. It's hard to find better deals. Special offer with the code THEMOVE. You get 15 bucks off any purchase of $150 made on the ecoy.com website until the end of July. George, what 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 is going on? Sorry. I'm, I, I, I'm in the middle of business. Uh, what are you sorry, doing? Over I was there? going through my, my Feed Musette bag they just sent me. Wait, did they send me one? They did, but I took it. I'm going to keep it for myself. Oh. <laughs> so I never see the man. He makes a mess and he keeps all my shit. Correct. Is that, is that right? So what's, what is in that feedback? Well, a bunch of stuff, tons of individual servings like we keep talking about. But one of my favorites is the Kayuku breakfast shake. Love it every morning before a ride. It's got enough carbs and protein to where you don't get hungry in the middle of a ride. All right. Also check out the Victus Recovery Drink. This isn't like drinking a post-workout smoothie. It actually tastes like a hydration drink, but it is meant for recovery, which is totally cool. Contains 21 grams of protein, 26 electrolytes, essential vitamins and minerals, and 10 grams of carbohydrates. Replenishes and rehydrates the body. Includes key ingredients like L-leucine, 
and tryptophan to enhance protein absorption. I think I read something about L-leucine the other day. I'm, re- I'm getting off the topic for a sec. <laughs> I'm, I'm freaked out. I don't want to. I don't want to get Alzheimer's. Yeah, I heard about I, that. I don't. I'm doing all these tests. I'm like, that's the one thing I don't want. Well, there's other things I don't want, but I think that L-leucine is one thing I looked up that I should be having. And 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 by the way, uh, my all my um, genetic stuff came back. I'm I'm in the good there on. But man, I fear, I fear that. I mean, because I'm, I'm going to live a long time. That genetic test shows your propensity for Alzheimer's. Yes, and, I, got, I got, I got the result yesterday. And that was good. It tests all these different things. And no, I had that too. I looked that up. That's one of the things that's I the looked one up. You don't want. We're still, we're still waiting for your uh, 23 and Me, so we find out your bloodline and your Where roots. From? <laughs> okay. Uh, but back on track here. He's 70 percent Neanderthal. <laughs> all right. You can make up. You can mix up that Victus uh, drink with the, our, the Feed Limited Edition tour bottle that is very, very cool. It says a les, a les, a les. All that's LA. How many years? How many tours? Time out. LA, LA, LA. Time out. Time out. How many tours do you do? <laughs> you know, it's just our slang time for out. LA. How many? How more many? than you. I did about 10 more than you. How so many? anyway, back on track. Were all of those tours in France? <laughs> no, a lot of it's, them we started uh, in other places as well. As we <laughs> mentioned there. in our uh, Ventum trivia. He said it. Um, <laughs> But so you can get this, <laughs> these bottles at the feed as well. All right. Head on over to the and you can get 11 of the best items for just 21 bucks. That's 50% off. Head on over to the feed.com and, uh, Alez. <laughs> I want to go back to, um, back. and Johan said he's going to cover it with uh, JB on JP squared. This was there perhaps was a bit of drama on the top of the climb where, uh, you Almeida 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 went up to, um, Ayuso and was like, bro, you need to start pulling here. Like, what he are you doing? He was sitting behind. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you don't like to see that, especially in the first mountain stage of the Tour de France. And clearly he ended up doing an incredible job, but you shouldn't, like I always say, the best teammates are the ones you don't have to ask to do what you need to be done. They need to know what needs to be done before it's asked of them. Yeah. Uh, th- there's only one place in the GC that matters for a team like that. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it's first. No. And it, it's not having two guys in the top five or I mean, three in the you, top 12. Or the white jersey. Uh, He's right off of the white jersey, uh, but that's Remco who has that. Uh, yeah, you saw a guy like Adam Yates who was third last year. He put it all out on the line on a day like today, stage four of the Tour de France. We still have yeah. two, two and a half weeks to go. Ended up getting dropped, but he put it all on the line for his team. And his obviously the sole goal of him is the the win of the Tour de France. Uh, I like that Adam Yates. I like both those Yates brothers. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know these. I just... A stage last year when they were way together, like that's I don't know, man. Those kids are tough. They they and to your point, they know the job, yeah. right? I'm here for a job, and and it's 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 for Pogi. I mean, that's uh, I like those guys. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow, another chance for Mark Cavendish. Yep. Has he? Have you touched base with him again uh, since he called in? Not in the uh, last two days, but um, yeah, it's a great, great chance. Short, fast stage, a couple category four climbs. Are we going to throw the pro- profile up? Yeah. yeah. I mean, th- there's obviously going to be a breakaway at the start. You see, it's a downhill start. It's funny. I had dinner with uh, one of the directors of Lance's favorite team in uh, Majorca, and he just said it is commonplace now. And you saw today at the start in the neutral, they're going. Full gas already in the neutral. The car is behind the director's car. He said the most races now, they'll be in the neutral section going 80 kilometers an hour. <laughs> because <laughs> the, before, back in our day, it was like, you think they'll attack from the gun? Like, well, hopefully not. It's going to be a TV attack. Some panic cooking is going to attack. No. Now it's, they know, they're guaranteed there's going to be attacks from the gun, <laughs> especially not like a, a day like tomorrow. So just expect a full gas start over 50 kilometers an hour for the first hour, at least, I'm sure. Um, but the sprinter teams have a pure, you know, one, they'll all have the same goal tomorrow, which is to keep the race together. So even though there most likely will be a breakaway, it will most likely be caught near the end. They will try to make it hard on guys like Cavendish, Phillipson, who had a bad crash um, over that category four climb with, I think it's like 30, 40, 30K to go, 40K to go at the top. So they're going to, the, the, the strong climber sprinter guys, they're going to put their team on the front there to make it as hard as possible, make these guys kind of suffer or get dropped. Uh, so this is going to be really high speed, uh, tons of action. We want to go over the finish. I, mean, I haven't really looked at it. You always study. I, I looked line. at the, yeah, the finish is pretty straightforward. The only complicated thing that I, is there is a slight bend, right? With, uh, they don't say exactly if you just guesstimate, if you walk back from the 1K banner, uh, it's probably 350 meters from the finish line. It's, it's a, uh, 
you know, it's there is a slight bend to the right, which just means you want to be more on the right. I mean, anything left of that, you're going, you're going to ride farther. Uh, that but nothing, pinch not, some people out. That's what you see with a slight yeah, bend. Some yeah, people get boxed yeah. out. Uh, but nothing, the not, weather looks to be clear. Um, should be a straightforward sprint. I mean, um, and, and if there would this, there will be a break. Can we agree upon that? Yeah. Right. So there's enough of these guys with interest that you're going to have four or five teams that are, that are pull there. You know, they'll put two or three guys each up there. The break's not going anywhere. Um, and it's another shot, another shot to see history made. And it's smart for a team like UAE being in the Jersey now, because they know that all these other teams are going to pitch in and control in the yeah. race in the next couple of days to go for the wins. This is, this is why this was a golden opportunity. Yeah. For education first, this is, I don't see a whole lot of other results, but it's not, it's so not, to speak, on the horizon. You keep a jersey until the time trial. Uh, it's not like they made a mistake. They, they no, were going I, full I, gas I and they got popped. I think it's just, yeah, but of course they wanted to keep it. I could see them getting a stage win with Healy. Well, this I mean, there's Ben Healy. Uh, if you get a trophy for trying... I mean, only, he, he always tries. He's getting a trophy. Not only that, Nielsen Palace was still in the first group, sat up and waited for Carapaz. So he's mm. obviously in incredible form and a huge chance for a stage win here in the next couple of weeks. Speaking of trying, I was playing uh, uh, my friend Morgan Hoffman's charity golf tournament months ago. Uh, this amazing course in Georgia called Ohupi. It's a new, newer course. Uh, very uh it's like an hour from my house the guy didn't even text <laughs> but, call nothing by the way when <laughs> we have to play golf all the time near my but, place uh, and just doesn't even uh, respond when we landed to I, my text messages we landed, but anyway finish the story. we landed i was like i don't even know where i am like we're in the middle of nowhere <laughs> anyways uh, i had a great caddy i love this guy and uh he you know sets you up tells you how to hit the shot and i'm i was like man he's like can you do it i said i'll try and he grabs my bag and kind of walks away he goes people in prison try I was like, hmm. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. Is that a Southern thing? I, mean, I was like, wow, that, that didn't, that's not a good swing thought. And let's, let's <laughs> to, remember. To, to the point of Ben Healy. I mean, he's always trying. Let's remember, he calls me bougie. He's got people carrying his bags on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? Calling me uh, bougie. I, I did there. I did there. All right, Ventum Trivia. We're going to give away an S1 brand new road bike at the end of this tour. Yesterday's question which Italian cyclist won the most Tour de France stages? It's a tie. Two Italians. Yeah. Can you name it? Uh, Mario Cipollini. Cipollini and? I didn't. I did the other one. Copy. Gimondi. Good guess. Bartoli. Bartoli. Gino Bartoli. Okay. And question for today, and I'll tell you where to send your answer. What year was the Tour de France first aired on television in the U.S.? Oof. In any capacity? Because, you know, originally it started, they just kind of had a... The John Tesh yeah, days. Yeah, they had an early, you know, kind of a wide Synopsis. world of sports kind of thing. It was, yeah. I'll give you a hint, it was a five-minute highlight yeah, reel. It would have <laughs> just been a snippet. Can you believe these guys are riding their bikes around France? <laughs> and they got to show it. They're like, these guys are crazy. Meanwhile, today... Yeah, I, I and I we're on Peacock, right? We're Peacock today. I try to explain yep, that to Johan sometimes. Like he, he's like, "Do you remember this name or that name?" And I'm like, "Johan, we got five minutes of tour coverage each week." Right, right. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, anyhow, what year did it first air in the U.S.? Send your answer to ventumracing.com/slash/the-move. Props to Ventum. That, that that's a good one. That is a good one. That's a good one. Hmm. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Here's a comment first from Simon. Uh, this was on YouTube. Eritrea has a legit cycling scene for now 30-plus years hmm. since I was in Africa. It was an Italian colony and has a high elevation, super tough riding. Interesting. Dang. Italian colony, that explains a lot, right? You know, my in-house uh, propeller head, Spencer Martin, did tell me that yesterday when we were talking about uh, Eritrea. Uh, he did say, I th he said, I think it used to be an Italian colony. That felt a little out there. I didn't want to go out there and say that because I, but Simon, thank you. You confirmed it. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. It's on the Red Sea. It's in Africa. Mm -hmm. By the way, can I, can I just brag for a second? Because this is, I love shit like this. All right. This, Binyan Germay wins. I like this guy, right? You're from Eritrea. Oh, I you, know where you're going with And you this. win a stage in the Tour de France. And you just seem cool, right? And uh, <clears throat> I'm always curious, you know, this younger generation, you know, how they, uh, who they follow and who they look at. I was like, well, I'm going to peep this guy on Instagram. 
All right. I go to Binion Gourmet's Instagram page right there on the kind of left bottom blue uh, button. It says, follow back. I said, shit. Oh, Gourmet's following you. Who's following me? Hey. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, hang on. Time out. Maybe he follows a lot of people. All right. Maybe he follows George like everybody else. <laughs> so I go up top right and I said, you I, instant stalked him that deep to see if he was following me. Oh yeah. I, really? I, I, Binyan, I was creeping. This I was creeping. Hold on. I didn't slide into your DMS like other people do, but hold on. So I'm like, well, hmm. let me see who else he follows. And I go up there and click uh, following. Well, I can tell you who was not in that list. All right. <laughs> And it's Mr. Popular over there to the left, George Hincapie. Oh, man. Sorry. So I, I, I fall back. I'm like, yes, I'm in. He's going to win another stage. This kid Hopefully. is a bike racer. Yeah. Huge fan of him. Also. Now, if I, if I go back tomorrow and he has unfollowed me, <laughs> I am an idiot. Okay. But uh, eh, that kind of, that, that, that made my day. Very cool. All right, I got another question for you guys. Uh, it says, have Lance or George watched the Tour de France Unchained documentary on Netflix? If so, what are your thoughts? Keep up the good work. I've been listening since the very beginning of the podcast Thank when you. it was stages. That's Brandon in Colleyville, well, we get, Texas. Well, That's just outside Dallas. Yeah, it is. We'll get into that uh, later on in the tour, maybe. The name change. But yeah. Have, no, you, I, watch, I, have you watched? I definitely watched it. I thought it was great. I was entertained by it. It um it did a good job showing like the inner workings of the Tour de France, the inner, the dynamics of the teams and how they work and the drama that goes in inside of teams as well throughout the tour. I mean, we all know it quite well, but a lot of the fans and spectators don't. Um, so I thought they did a good job. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I caught, I haven't watched uh, a full season of either season, uh, but the, the, the bits and pieces that I caught from season one and the bits and pieces I caught from season two, I thought it was uh uh, I thought it was much improved. Not that season one was uh, terrible in any sense, but it was, I enjoyed it. The ones that I watched, uh, I enjoyed. Um, it's uh, the key to these is getting, which is the, is the hard thing, right? You're asking athletes in the middle of the hardest sporting event in the world. I think I've mentioned that before to, to open up your doors, your bedrooms, your massage session. I mean, all your PT, all Dinners, this stuff all that. To, to cameras. And it's, I've been there. It is not pleasant. And so it's, uh, this isn't, um, this isn't formula one and it isn't tennis and it's not golf and it's not any of the other sports that they've done. This is the tour de France and it's cycling, right? It's, it's much harder for these athletes to allow that access than any other athlete in the world. And you're one of the mm. first OGs that did allow that access with movies like Road, Par Road to Paris. And, and, and the, 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 speaking of the Tour de France on TV, it used to be on uh, Outdoor Life Network here in the U.S. And so we did a little <laughs> reality show, mm -hmm. The Lance Chronicles, <laughs> starring the main star of the whole show was our good friend College. <laughs> oh, when he wrecked the bus. He was, yes. You know, <laughs> signing autographs in Georgia. I said, what, what are you doing? You're, a, you're my homie. You're, bu you're driving the bus. You don't sign autographs. But anyways, it, it's, a, it's a commitment. And, uh, but I thought they did a good job. I will say that. It's, and other, uh, I have heard from other people that, that really enjoyed it. People that don't follow cycling, don't watch the tour, have come up to me and be like, man, I saw that thing on Netflix. I, that was really good. It's good for the sport. Yep. You know, people said the same thing when we launched this show. They're like, you're explaining things. It's good mm -hmm. for the sport. Help people understand it. Well, it's even though, yeah, even though you have a lot of new people watching the sport, for instance, my daughter, she watched the Netflix series. She's like, Dad, I didn't realize cycling was such a team sport. <laughs> my daughter <laughs> said that to me. So in that sense, they did a great job. Um, it's yeah, like, really. do you know your dad's known yeah, as the exactly. greatest teammate <laughs> ever? Well, yeah. that's Alez. funny. Alez. 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 <laughs> I send in those questions for a future show, the move at we do dot team. All right. And we'll be back, uh, as we've said, uh, said a couple days ago, but it's, it's, let's uh, go Cav it's, uh, tomorrow. This is a neutral, uh, we're, 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 this is, we're, we are members of the media. We're impartial, but no, let's go Cav. Sir Mark Cavendish. It's, it's just another day to see history made. And, um, yes, uh, we are pulling for you Cav. Uh, but we're also pulling for everybody to yep. see. I think you're just being insane. So uh, get that team lined up. Stay out of trouble. We saw it the other day. You know, a little snafu with a, a K, K and a half to go. You get it's over, right? Yep. So keep the team there. Stay out of trouble. Get in the right position. Let's see history made. Oh look, Guillermo's following me too. <laughs>
Uh Oh, and still no George? I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow.